everyone and welcome back to Pearly Bee Planet. Today I am super excited because I'm going to be sharing with you all the 10 fun and easy Pearly Bee DIYs collab with Craftastic. This collab is going to be where I show you guys 5 cute and easy DIYs and she shows you 5 other cute and easy DIYs. So um, yeah, this is going to be a big video but hopefully I can condense it so I'm not talking and this is not turned into 10 minutes. But I am so excited, we have been working really hard, so I'm going to link her channel and her video down below as soon as possible so you guys can watch it too, so let's get started. For this video, I'm going to be showing you all how to make bookmarks, picture frames, magnets, coasters, and tie-dye blobs. So the first thing we're going to be making are these tie-dye blobs. I absolutely love these. These are so adorable. I love how they turn out. It's probably one of my favorite things. Probably it is my favorite thing of this whole collab. I love it how it turns out in all the pretty colors and combination you can do it in. So let's get started. You'll be needing perler beads, any pegboard, wax taper, and an iron. So the first step for your tie-dye blob is to take out a few colors that you want to use. For example, they can be anywhere from brights or neons or darks. For whatever three, four, or five colors you want to do, it does not matter. Just pick the colors that you want or pick randomly and I'm sure it will come out amazingly. So of each color, I'm probably going to be using 10 to 15, maybe even less than that because tie-dye blobs don't have to be that big and you're going to use less than you actually expected to use. So one color at a time, you're going to take a few, like four or five, and put it on the pegboard. You want to make sure that these are condensed so they'll all turn out to be one big blob. But you want to make sure they're even and spread out so it doesn't look like separate colors, but all everything colors. <laughs> Okay, so this one is going to be a little weird to iron since you are used to ironing in a leveled space and ground area. Obviously, it's not going to be that. Go put your wax paper on, and once your iron has finished heating, basically what you're going to do is take your iron and put it flat down. Now, we're going to go back and forth really carefully, but don't worry about that rickety space. Just go really slow and put some pressure on it. Now this is going to feel really weird for the people who are used to basically everybody who usually irons. So you're just going to keep doing that and you will start to see it come down and shine through the wax paper. So just keep doing it until you think it is all finished and everything is basically connected. You're not going to have every one that's connected so don't worry. Since they're all on top of each other you're not going to get all of it. So someone's going to fall off. You want to carefully it's gonna, probably going to be a little hot and you do right here. Right now it actually looks really cool. So what we're gonna do is gonna flip it over. Sometimes all the pearly beads will stay, sometimes it doesn't. This time I think most of them are gonna stay. So carefully you're gonna kinda have to peel it off. Might be a little hot, so maybe give it a few minutes to cool down. And then you're going to iron the other side. It probably is easier since it's a little more flat down. If you don't wanna iron the other side, you don't have to. It still gives it a really cool look and then put it on a flat surface to cool down. So this is how my tie-dye blob turned out. I like both of them. This one is a little bit more bigger, but I do like how this one is like mixed in and everything. Overall, they both turned out really cool. One creation that I really have never tried before, maybe I've done a few times, is a coaster. Coasters are really awesome because it's different and innovative and you usually don't see that. So you can make, again, you use a circle and you literally can do whatever you want with it. You'll be needing perler beads, a small circle pegboard, wax paper, and an iron. For the coaster, you can use any color beads you want, and it might be helpful if you have some that are already color sorted because if you do large increments of them, that will be definitely be easier. There's endless combinations of what you can do with a small circle pegboard. So this one I'm going to do five and then leave one to do another color. So it's kind of like alt alternative except five to one ratio. And now I'm filling it in with green, and then next I'm going to make a whole circle of red. And then I'm going to make one other circle of red to add a cool, bolder look. And now for this one, I'm going to do half yellow and then half orange. So for the next circle, I'm going to do light gray, dark gray, and everything. And then I'm going to put full light grays. And I'm going to put light grays on the rest of the circle, except in the middle, I'm going to put one blue. So 
these are the two final products for my coasters. I really like both of them. I like this because it's all like colorful and everything. But this is more of a laid back cool look. Another innovative idea I have is this bookmark. I love this bookmark. Again, the opportunities and ideas are endless and it looks really cool. And you can even iron it down more for a more of sophisticated bookmark look. I love it. I love this one. It's just creative and retro. You'll be needing pearler beads, a square pegboard, wax paper, and an iron. So I'm going to fast forward this real quick since there's a million combinations that you can do. It's really important that you just take some inspiration and really do whatever you want. So I'm just going to do that. And um, yeah, take some inspiration of my two bookmarks and you will get an amazing look, I promise. So when you iron your bookmark, you're going to want it to iron down a little more than you're usually going to do. And this being, you want to make sure that it is all flat down and you can't see the holes in the two final products. I could have ironed this down even more if you really wanted it to fit in a book. But I like both these combinations. They're really cool. They're like, this one seems like jungly. I don't know why. And so right now I'm going to be showing you all how to make this magnet. And I love magnets. You can do everything with it like whatever one you want all you have to do is place a magnet on it so this is pretty easy and really fun and then you can hang it up wherever it is magnetic you'll be needing pearler beads any pegboard and any creation wax paper and iron magnetic paper and scissors so i'm not going to show you guys what to make because for a magnet you can make whatever you want so go ahead and make anything if you don't have any inspiration i will link my tutorials playlist down below and you can find something so with my scissors, I'm just going to cut out my paper. My paper is old, so it will not peel, but usually it does peel. So once you peel it, go ahead and stick it on. The other option you have is to take Elmer's glue and glue it on there instead. Yeah. And look how pretty it is. It can be stuck in anywhere. That is magnetic. So now I'm going to show you all how to make a pearler bead picture frame. I love picture frames. They're so unique, especially when they have a picture. You'll be needing pearler beads, a square pegboard, wax paper and iron, glue, a picture, and scissors. So you should start out with a picture frame about 14 by 14, depending on how big that you want the picture frame to be. If you want it to be a small one, then probably something like 15 by 15. If it's like a whole size picture, which might take you um, a few more hours, well, a few more minutes, then maybe do 30 by 30. How about that? And now you can do the border lines, and I'm going to do like an arrow, so I'm going to do three on each side. So go ahead and get your scissors and start cutting out. You don't want to cut it out too much because you don't know how big the picture frame will be. Just get it so there's no more white. And then start fitting it on the frame, and this will take a little bit of work, but don't cut too much because then you will become with a bad picture frame. So take your time, and it'll look amazing. So these are the two final looks of our picture frame. One obviously doesn't have a picture in it, but these are really awesome. I love how creative you can get with it. So thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I really hope you all enjoyed. This took a lot of work and everything. So yeah, hopefully it paid off. So do not forget to subscribe to her channel and go to her video. Since you already know how to do five DIYs, you need to know how to make five other fun DIYs when you're at home bored. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all next time with another awesome video. Bye everyone. Mwah.